I, I love that in his presence, the only proper response is to surrender. The psalmist says in Psalms 34, oh, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall be continually in my mouth. And then it grants us this invitation, oh, come, let us magnify, let us exalt his name forever. His presence, his person, his beauty. I, I firmly believe that his presence and your presence is heaven on earth. Jesus doesn't have what you need. Jesus is everything you need. Come on, magnify him right where you are in your home. Come on, lift your voice just for a moment. Close your eyes. Come on, extend your hands. All oh, you people, celebrate it. We praise your name. We bless your name. Oh, continually, may your praises be on my lips. Hallelujah. Amazing. Wow. It's incredible. It's incredible. It is our honor, I mean our honor, to come to you again today, on another day, on another Sunday, the beginning of a new week. So humbled and so honored. I believe with all my heart that the same Spirit that's here is the same Holy Spirit that's moving in and through your environment. It's a moment. It's a holy moment. Let's cherish this moment. Let's lean into this moment and celebrate this moment. Amen. I really feel I have a word for you this morning. And I've got, I feel like I've got a lot to say. Uh, I, I've often felt it's just possible, and this is in sheer humility. What if all of our preparation was for this moment? What if every test, every trial, every hardship, every disappointment, every prayer we've prayed, was for this moment. I believe this moment is so pregnant with prophetic understanding. We are experiencing the birth pains that there's so much that God's doing. Let's capture it. Amen. Come on, I know you can't see them, but we got a bunch of people on cameras and serving and worship and ministry. Can we come on, put our hands together for the amazing team? Amazing. This was so anointing today, I almost thought I could join and sing it. <laughs> I love it. So good. And I might start growing up my hair like JJ. I think I need to get some hair. You just never know. The next time you see me, I may be really, really have a flowy beard and some long hair or something. My kids have been telling me, Dad, how long are you going to have that haircut? I said, I know, I know. When I find something I like, I stay with it. Awesome. Are you ready for the word? Man, it's week three already. Week three goes so fast, huh? Where's time gone? We're moving fast. We're in a series. You, you may know it by now, and it's, it's supported all over the screen. We're in a series, a big series, three words. It's powerful. It's prophetic. It's practical. Our series is called To the End. There's no doubt the mandate of heaven, the call to this generation. Everyone at the sound of my voice, the call to us is finishing strong and courageous to the end. And I think a nice uh, perspective of that is, so what matters now? I, I think it's safe to say all of us have a, a different perspective now, and all of us have come into a deeper place of clarity of what matters now. I want to speak uh, this message to you entitled, Part 3, Crossing Over. And I really am excited. I, I don't know that I've ever been as excited about a message than this one. Well, because it's, it's, it's this week's message, but I am really excited about it. And it's always my in prayer and endeavor that somehow, some way, God would use this ordinary life to speak a word in season to you. So if you would, in your Bibles, open your Bibles today to John chapter 18. And uh, I want to look here at something that's so powerful. So everyone say crossing over. Say it like you mean it. Look to your spouse or your children or if you're by yourself and look to the wall and say, don't you think it's time we cross over and enter in. John uh, chapter 18 um, is, we, I, I feel so, as the audience, as the reader, I feel so privileged to be exposed to this text. And once we read it, you'll see it. There's uh, a powerful pivot and moment in Jesus' life and ministry that is so, so profound here. 
and um, I want us to read it. John chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden. We know this to be the Garden of Gethsemane, which Matthew points out, which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who would betray him, also knew that place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. And verse 4, so powerful. This verse 4 shifted and changed all eternity. Jesus, therefore, and in context, fully knowing all things that would come upon him, having weighed out everything that was about to take place. Scripture says he willingly went forward, sacrificially, in his humanity, Jesus being faced with what was before him, chose to willingly step and go forward and said to them, who are you seeking? They said to him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I'm he. And Judas, who would betray him, also stood with them. Now when he said, I am he, they drew back and all fell on the ground. Th this verse 4 is the contingency. It's the access point. It's the pivot that shifted everything for all humanity. And I want us to get this picture as we begin today. This revelation, this thought will transform your heart. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will deposit this into your life, into your spirit, into your home, into your sphere. Jesus, the Son of God, watch this, Jesus willingly, he went forward so that all of us could forever move forward in life and do all eternity. Jesus went forward so that we could always move forward in life and enter into all eternity. Oh, how great is King Jesus. 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 He took that posture and position so that we would never have to get stuck in life and get left behind. That we could finish to the end. And I'm telling you, Jesus has supplied all the grace you and I need in life to overcome any and every obstacle so that we can cross over and enter into his fullness. Jesus was the Passover lamb, and Jesus passed over so you and I could cross over. Jesus passed over so you and I could cross over. I'm so thankful. This is just the introduction, but oh, how great and amazing is Jesus. He went forward so I could always move forward in life and don't have to get stuck, get unstuck, amen? And then let me support it and underscore it with one of, the, one of possibly one of the greatest Old Testament Bible stories. And I say that almost facetiously because it's the greatest story for us, but it was the worst for King David. It was his worst day. It is called the devastation of Ziglag. And no doubt it's the worst day anyone would ever want to experience. And the Bible says uh, after Ziglag, you'll understand it, that um, the Amalekites came in, burned it with fire, took the women and children, left David and his men coming back uh, after a battle and finding everything they had, all their possessions burned with fire and nothing left. That is a bad day. And verse 8 David's inquiring of the Lord what to do, and God responds to David and says this, so David inquired, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered them, pursue, for you will surely overtake them without fail and recover all. So David, he and 600 men who were with him came to the brook, another brook, Beshor, where those stayed who were left behind. Those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued. He and 400 men. For 200 stayed behind. Who we are, who were weary, for they could not cross over the brook, 
Sean. And then the story ends, David's story ends, just like your and our story ends. This is how our story ends. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, son or daughter, spoil or anything that they had been taken. David recovered all. And David took all the herds that were given to him and the livestock, David and the spoil. David's story ends like our story, recover all. Say it with me one more time. It's time to cross over. It's time to move forward. It's time to enter in. Father, we love you today and love your word. Give us ears to hear. Would you, precious Holy Spirit, speak by and speak through me. Amplify your voice. May I please be your vessel fit for your use, and may my tongue be the pen of a ready writer. Would you amplify this message? Father, would you cause this sound to resound, to bring revelation and insight, that we don't live by information, but we live by revelation in this hour, led by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. To the end, what, what matters now? You can almost say, what really matters now? Jesus, how amazing. Willingly, sacrificially, in his humanity, went forward so that you and I could always move forward in life and enter into all eternity. We've established some things, and I know you're going, not again, yet again, we're going to repeat some things because it's crucial. We've got some things on repeat, just like your favorite song. Come on, what's our call? I'm speaking to you. What's our call? Mom and dad, believers, taking a breath. We have a call. We have a heavenly mandate. Our call is to the end. What we're commissioned to do. It's all throughout the New Testament. Hebrews says it, to the end, to the end, to the end. We can't stop now. We can't stop halfway, three quarters away. We got to finish the baton that heaven and the Holy Spirit has entrusted us to do. Oh, and I think we're the generation that may see the completion of this dispensation of grace. I think it's a new day. I think it's a new era. How exciting that the Holy Spirit entrusts us with that fourth leg of the race to bring that baton to Jesus. Glory to God. To the end. That should fire you up. That should make you, someone was flipping a pancake or something and freaked out. I'm going to get loud. Turn me up. I've worked too hard. Turn me up. To the end. Finishing. It's our call. It's our mandate. To the end. Now, not just to the end, weak and feeble, distracted, but firm and steadfast. In fact, the Bible gives us some adjectives, some verbs, and this is how it should be. Firm. Steadfast. Immovable. To the end. Strong and courageous. I want to finish well. Come on, slapping some high fives and chest bumping and celebrating the victories and the wins. You know we're winning. No doubt the kingdom of God, are you kidding, is winning. Souls are being saved. Homes are being restored. And just like the waters cover the sea, the glory of the Lord is covering the earth. Jesus has won and he's winning. You are on the winning side. Let nothing tell you otherwise. Every time in Acts they try to persecute the church, come against the church, it only spread and worked towards God's advantage. That's the beautiful thing. Everything plays into God's sovereign plan for the glory of his kingdom. And to God be the glory. We kind of got a battle cry, an anthem. Like worship's an anthem. You know what our anthem is? Stay with God. On a weary day, stay with God. When you don't know what to text somebody, just tell them this, stay with God. That's our anthem. I'm calling for a battle cry. Stay with God. Amen. Stay with him. Stay with what you know. <laughs> Stay with what works. Don't get to Steve now. Don't get off into all these other. No, no, there's a lot of false signs. Stay with what you know. Stay in the spirit. Stay with the word. Stay where he brought you. Stay with God to the end. Because the beautiful thing about the gospel, the beautiful thing about Jesus, friend, it's not how you started. It's how we finished. All of us maybe have had blemishes. My resume is blemished, but his blood cleanses me. It's not how I start. It's how we finish. And then we describe something about our focus. We have a call, but we got to get focused. And what's the focus? This is deep. This is really heavy. Like this is, this is, this is serious. You want to know what the focus is? Today's the focus. Right here, right now. Stay in today. What's the task before you? What's the conversation now? What's the moment look like? Yeah, I'm calling the church to stay in today. 
stay in now. Stay in here now. Yes. You know what the Bible says over and over? Hebrews exhorts us, exhorts and says, it challenges us and it says this, exhort one another while it's still called today. Why? Because it won't always be today. Right. Do you sense the urgency? And I do got fire shot up. There is an urgency. Get right with Jesus today. Make a change today. Exhort one another while it's still called. Because today won't be forever. Make today count. James says it like this, and just hear this, man. This is like a chiropractor adjustment, and it aligns you. Look at what James says. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we'll do such and such a city. We'll spend a year there and sell and make a profit, like all of us. The, the rabbis say, man plans and God laughs. Right? We've all planned out. 20, how many could agree this is not what I had planned for 2020? I mean, if you think about it, just a moment ago, I also, I was on tour, and our church was in the greatest moment, and we, we, this was, we were, Ab and I were a month ago going to Hawaii, and got inter this was not on our radar. Anybody else can attest? Why? Because God wants us to stay in today, and sometimes we plan our ways, but God directs, now we're definitely on God's timetable, right, where he wants us, but James says soberly, don't plan all these other things. Yeah. You're going to buy, you're going to sell, you're going to make a profit. Whereas you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Now, we could have pushed that off in past generations, but that's more relevant now than ever. For what is your life? I love this. It puts our life in context. But a vapor, here, now, gone tomorrow. For the little time vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills. Yeah. I, I used to, I don't consider myself a Baptist. Uh, we're just, and I don't consider myself much, but sometimes in the Baptist church, they would always say that statement, well, I'll be there if the Lord wills. And I would be like, yeah, he wills. <laughs> you know, sometimes in the early days, I remember church members would go, oh, pastor, I'll be here next week if the Lord wills. And I'd be like, he wills. Like, I would kind of rebuke it. It bothered me if the Lord wills. Like, no, he wills. It's in his word. He wills. <laughs> but, but, but now I've kind of changed a little bit and said, I like to live with a plan of action and but, but now it's like, we've been planning our ways, but if the Lord wills, I don't know what he's all willing. I just want to be in his will. And you know what? Sometimes about his will is not my will. Right. You ever struggle with your will and his will? Like, it's a struggle. I think we should go this way. But his will has got to prevail. It's what the Lord wills. And that's the hour we're in, what the Lord wills. This may not have been our choice, but it's what the Lord wills. If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this. But you boast in your arrogance and all this boasting. Therefore, he who knows what to do and doesn't do it, to him it's sin, meaning cease today. You know God's gift to you and I is today? John Maxwell says this, don't count the days, make the days count. And Jesus, he puts it in context because again, we're not getting caught up in fear and worry and anxiety and uncertainty of tomorrow. We're not. That's, that's, we're not going to get caught in the anxiety and certainty of tomorrow. We're going to stay in today because what Jesus said, sufficient for today is its own worry. There's enough battles today. Come on. There's enough things to fight today. Tomorrow is full of uncertainty. Stay in today. And then there's this warning. And my goodness, I think we need to be warned now more than ever because the Holy Spirit warns us today if you'll hear his voice and not harden your heart. A lot easier read than done, huh? Church, believer, whether you like me or not, whether I'm your choice or not, hear me develop discernment now. There are some crazy things coming down the pipe. Yeah, we can't be, there will be false signs and wonders. There will be people saying things and doing supernatural things. And if you're not grounded in discerning, we may be applauding an antichrist and missing the real Christ. There's many varying Jesus that's called antichrist. And I'm telling you, we've got to discern, 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 discern where to be, when to go. And the Holy Spirit is our anchor. You have heaven's help. You better get to know him. You better spend quality time with him. And you have the voice of his word. You have the voice of his spirit and the voice of his word. And they always confirm. They always confirm. And I believe you've learned your whole life for now not to fall in deception. 
I believe everything the Holy Spirit's taught you now is to serve as an anchor to keep you grounded. I'm telling from the youngest to the oldest, discernment, 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 because deception is at an all-time high. And I can't get too much into it, but you better be careful for vaccines. You better be careful for what you put in your body. You better be careful because there's some stuff coming now that is serious. It's book of Revelation, and it's here, and it's now, and we as the people of God must be discerning of spirits and deception. Amen. Amen. It's a good time to say, wow, he must have some coffee. I like my coffee extra hot. Come on. We got to hear. We got to discern. Beware, brother, at least there be any of you an evil heart. You're going, get off this. I can't. Of unbelief. You know what God calls an unbelieving heart? Someone who doesn't respond to him. Someone who doesn't respond to him. An unbelieving heart. But today, today here is a voice. It's echoed. Obey today. Live responsive to God and praise him today. I'm going to have a praise party today. <laughs> I'm going to live responsive to God today. You'll be so happy. I, I did a, and they may critique me, they may, but I did like a three-mile walk the other day with the girls. So they, they did the morning walk, and they're like, Dad, you'll love it, okay? You can do it, Dad. It's three miles, just it's fast, but we do little things. We do arm things and chunk things, and it's fun, Dad. Just going, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to be Dad could. I'm good to go. 7.30, sun setting, beautiful. We're about five paces in. Abby's like, babe, babe. I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. I mean, and then we get on these big pathways, and I'm starting to, yeah, I'm good. I'm so good. Come on. And then they start doing like this the whole way, and like this the whole way, and I made it, but I won't tell you how far back I made it. <laughs> did I do it the whole way? No, but when they looked, I did it. <laughs> but I'm just saying that to say, I'm going to go on a walk today. I'm going to be present today. I'm going to make today count for all of eternity. Be present in the day. I'm going to worship today. I'm going to pray today. I'm going to spend time in the Word today. I'm going to live awake today. And it's the truth. It's the absolute nature of God to speak. God speaks. And he's speaking to us today, inviting us into a fresh visitation. I'm going to talk to various people. Even a friend of mine, his family, and being home, he's just saying, gosh, it's so rich. My wife and I, our marriage, time with the kids, there's just such a richness. It, wouldn't you agree right now? There's such a freshness in the air, such a fresh encounter. I mean, I sat in the bed just the other night for about an hour and just reminisced on this moment, cherishing these conversations. Wouldn't you say there's a freshness of the Holy Spirit today? Praise God. Hit your neighbor and say, it's time to cross over. Say, it's time we enter in. Oh, the value of his voice. The value of his voice and the value of his word. <laughs> They're synced. We have the value of his voice and the value of his word. How powerful, huh? How majestic. How peaceful. Come on, when God speaks, how affirming, isn't it? It's so affirming, huh? You can have all kinds of different winds, but when he says something to you, it just calms you. It settles you. It rests you. We have his voice as an anchor and the voice of his word. And I got to be honest with you. I threw this in here that I just made a choice. I just said I want to say this because this spoke to me, and this was out of my own personal devotion this week. And I just was reading the word like you just reading the word, and something just leaped in me, and I became undone. L look at this. Speaking of his voice. Psalm 62, 11 and 12. Watch this. God has spoken once. Twice I've heard this. Let me tell you and help you something about God's voice. Whenever God speaks, he echoes. Whenever God speaks, it always reverberates. It echoes. His voice can't be contained. It, it's, it's doubled. It's tripled. So when God spoke, Twice I've heard this. What do you need to hear? What's God saying? Are you ready? Here's what I heard. The power belongs to God. Yeah. You know what you need to hear in this hour? The power and the glory belong. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get caught in this and don't get caught in that. Don't get caught in the enemy. All the power. All the, and you need to hear that and be anchored. All the glory and the power belongs to. He's the sovereign Lord. God. He rules the earth. Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. And you know what you need to put on repeat? The power belongs to the Lord. Say it. All the power 
All the ability belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now, can I help you? There are prophetic things that need to happen. <laughs> like there needs to come a governmental thing that becomes one world, and there needs to become things that need to happen. Don't, it's Bible. But the Lord is still in control, but there are some prophetic things that have to take place. And I get excited seeing them materialize right before us. I'll say it over and over, the Lord's, the power belongs to the Lord. You know what you need to hear? All ability belongs to Jesus. Jesus is king of his kingdom. And in his name, the one we worship, whose church we're building, King Jesus, the man, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He is the sovereign Lord God. Look what Psalms 135 says. For I know that the Lord is great, and our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, he does. In heaven and in earth, in the seas and all of the depths. The Lord's in control. God's at work. That settles it. Come on, say it. Jesus is king. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Use his name. How precious is his name. How powerful is it. In his name, he's given us all power and authority on heaven and earth. There's the keys of the kingdom. We have the power. We have the authority. That's what needs to be on repeat. We're the church. We're the blood-bought church called and commissioned for this moment to shine forth the beauty and the praises. We are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10 says. I want to come through that screen and slap you. No, (laughs) hug you. No, just tell you, listen, put it on repeat. It's our finest hour, and Jesus is working in the most unprecedented ways. It's time to cross over. Now, his voice his voice. The team is saying, Pastor, keep preaching. We're giving you three more hours. Thank you, team. That's so kind, but I'm, I'm good. <laughs> They're like, go home. I'm good. Something about his voice we need to hear. Something about his voice we need to discern and understand. Yes. God's voice, hear me, God's voice is always calling us forward, onward, and upward. God's voice is always calling us in the direction of Him. God's voice is always calling us to move into a direction of crossing over. Much of the Holy Spirit's voice and the Holy Spirit's direction is what Romans 4.14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. His voice is a leading it's a direction. The, the gift of the Holy Spirit gives us the upper hand in every situation. We have the leading of the Holy Spirit. We've been prepared by Him. We're led by Him. It's a leading. But look at that. To be led. If I'm going to lead you, I'm going to have to be one step ahead. So the Holy Spirit is one step. He's not taking you backwards. He's taking you. He's not taking you back to sin, back to shame. Back. To, no, no. He's leading us where? Forward. The Holy Spirit is taking us forward. That word led is powerful. You know what the word led means? To lead and to guide in the direction of a head. It it actually means to lead in the direction of forward. Forward. Or beyond this moment. I'm not saying out of today, but beyond the obstacle, beyond the chaos. Beyond the confusion, he's leading us beyond. Have you ever looked above the clouds to the sun? He's leading you beyond the clouds, beyond depression, beyond the divorce, beyond the Holy Spirit. He's always leading you beyond the natural. You may be down to nothing, but he's up to something because he's leading you supernaturally to a greater dimension. Get beyond your thoughts and get out of yourself because the Holy Spirit's leading us into the dimension of the realm of the Spirit. And those who live by the Spirit, there is no law. He's leading us onward and beyond. I love that. It actually means to be in front of you and pull you upward. If I could, as an illustration, we're on ground level, ground zero. The Holy Spirit's a step up, and he's trying to take you to where he is, higher ground. Get to higher ground. The joy of the Lord is higher ground. Faith is higher ground. Come on, praise is higher. Get to higher 
you have heaven's help. And he's leading us in this hour. We're not guessing. We're not flipping coins. We're not even drawing lots. We can be led by the word and by his voice and by the still leadership of the Holy Spirit. He's calling us forward. This is what it means. I think we have it ready. It's a statement. This is powerful. This was fresh to me. This was revelatory to me as I studied this week and broke it down some more. This is what it means to be led. To lead, accompanying, uh, accompany, and, and bring to a specific place. Where does the Holy Spirit come from? Heaven, he come from Jesus. His assignment was revealed, remember in John 16, Jesus said it's better that I go, that I'll send to you the comforter, the paracletus, the helper, and he will guide you into all truth, and he'll tell you of things, he'll declare things of me. Where'd the Holy Spirit come from? Heaven. Where's he taking us to? To the end and to heaven. That's why he's telling you don't get wrapped up in this world. That's why he's telling you let it go, because he's taking us to where he came from, and he's bringing us home to heaven. He's taking us beyond here, and he's taking us where? To where he came from. You know where the Holy Spirit's taking you? To the end in your marriage. To the end. He's not leaving you here. He's bringing you forward. He's calling you onward through this preaching, through what you read in the Bible, through that song. He's leading his church, bringing them to a place. God's calling us. He's bringing us. You know what it is? You know what the Holy Spirit is? Here's his assignment. The Holy Spirit is actually called to unite us to Jesus. His whole goal is to bridge the gap back to Jesus. Jesus said, it's better that I go. I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he will bring you to me. There's really no distance in the Spirit. In fact, right now you're seated in heavenly places, and Jesus is far above all principality and power. You know where you're at? Far above. But you go, but preacher, this is how I feel. I know emotions are crazy. (laughs) Look at me. I'm an emotional guy. They're fickle. They're crazy. Didn't Paul say everything you see is temporary, subject to change? We're living in an eternal place. What did Colossians say? Set your mind on the things that are above. We're seated with him. We're living in heavenly places, and we have all authority in heaven and earth. Jesus is far above sickness, far above cancer, far above the pandemic. He's far above it. Hallelujah. You're a little too dead for this young preacher. Wake up. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. He's connecting us to Jesus. He's calling us to Jesus. So in the end, the Holy Spirit's assignment is to lead me to the end. Forward. Why? Because whatever he hears, he'll speak, and he'll tell you of things to come. He'll tell you of things to come. So the Holy Spirit's telling you of the future today. Because he's in the future. He's in eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you some keys right now as I begin to wrap this up and bring it home. I want you to really take this to heart. It's going to help me. It's going to help you. It's going to help all of us. So to cross over, so to enter in, don't get left behind. Say that to your neighbor right now. Say, don't get left behind. Whatever you do, (laughs) P.S., don't get left behind. So here it is. Here's a big overarching theme I want to establish to you. To, to get to the end, we're going to have to cross over. Yeah. So getting to the end, first and foremost, to cross over and to enter in, there's always lies obstacles to overcome. To cross over and to enter in, there always lies obstacles to overcome. What are you willing to overcome? For the Gideon army, 22,000 men couldn't even be apart because they had fear and were afraid. They couldn't even enter in because they were so shackled by the obstacle of fear. What right now is trying to saddle you and weigh you down from crossing over the brook to enter in? Every time in Bible, in my life, in anyone's life, to do anything, to write a new song, To have a church service, to get your marriage better, you're going to have to overcome the obstacle that's in your way. There's always opposition. Jesus in Revelation 2 and 3 is looking at his beloved church. Jesus loves his church. 
Jesus loves his people. He shed his blood for his church. This is his bride. I love my wife more than I can say. I love my family, but I can't even fathom the love Jesus has for his bride. Woe to anyone who comes against it. He loves his bride. But in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, he is speaking and he's judging the seven churches. Jesus. Right before seals get broken and revelation takes place. Revelation 2, 7, to the loveless church. Well, let us not be the loveless church. Just no love in that church. Just just, they just say it and don't do it. Loveless church. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Here it is, to him who overcomes. You're going to see a theme. The one thing Jesus said to every church is he ended every church with this. To him who over. You know why he's saying? There's going to be so much to overcome. Wow. There is going to be in this hour, you are, there is so much to overcome. Okay. Think about it. Revelation 2.11, he's speaking to the persecuted church. After his pros and cons, his blessings and his rebukes, this is what Jesus says to the church. To him who overcomes. overcomes. The next church we see is the compromising church. It's the church who compromised. Let us not be the compromising people. Selling out. For ease, for comfort. The compromising church, he blesses them, he rebukes them, and then to the compromising church, he says to him who overcomes. The next church is Revelation 2.26. This is the corrupt church. They're just corrupt. They're just, there's no realness there. Oh, Jesus, let us not be the corrupt church. To him who? The, the next church is the dead church. In fact, he says you appear to be alive. There's a lot on your roll, but you're dead. We, we can almost get false in numbers, huh? We can almost think that we're alive because of all these things and maybe not even be, be alive in his eyes. And guess what he says? He blesses him, he rebukes him, and he says the, the dead church to him who? Jesus, our king, speaking in this hour, past, present, and future, says to everyone at the sound of his voice, to him who overcomes. To get to the end, you're going to have to overcome a lot of things to get to the end. What are you overcoming to cross over? What are you willing to overcome to stay fresh, to stay awake, to stay free from sin and free from guile? We got to overcome. And then there's the faithful church. I hope we're that. Revelation 3.12. Everyone just believe that we're the faithful church. I want to be the well done, that good and faithful. Guess what he says? He blesses them, he rebukes them. But to the faithful church, he says to him who? Revelation 3.21, the lukewarm church. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. To him who overcomes. And then what I found out, I've preached on this many different years, but what I found out today while, or last night while studying, I didn't know that he ended Revelation with the same thing. Yeah. Revelation 21, verse 7, Jesus puts it on repeat. He who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Church, 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 church. What obstacle is in your way keeping you from getting to the end and to overcoming all that he has planned? I wish I had another message. I wish I had a little spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. The sugar is Jesus. It's his grace. But the reality is, are you willing to overcome? lukewarmness and sin and lethargy and whatever else is coming our way because you and I know that what God's doing, the enemy's trying to oppose it and counterfeit it too. For Jesus, go back to the garden with me. It's a place he spent time with his friends. Judas, the betrayer was at hand. Judas knew where he was. Jesus, in his humanity, is standing there. And Judas walks up, kisses him, Betrays him with a kiss, and Jesus, not in his deity, in his humanity, has a choice to make. Knowing the fatality of his life, knowing his soon blood beaten body, crucifixion awaits him. And here Jesus is in the garden, and he has a choice like you and I have a choice. What will we do? Will we stay here, complain here, and go backwards here? 
Or will we, like Jesus, willingly say, Lord, I'm willing because you went forward. I'm going to move forward and step in. And one of the beautiful things about Jesus, one of the keys of his life is Jesus willingly and sacrificially and in his humanity said, I am. And Jesus went forward so that we, you and I, can always, your marriage can move forward. Don't get stuck. Everything about your life doesn't have to be stuck. The grace of Jesus, the ability of Jesus is supplied to us to allow us to move forward to all that is to come. Did you read that story about David and his men? You got the picture. Ziglag happens. 600 men, they have a word from God. God says, hey, pursue, overtake, let's recover all. How many would love that word? You got that word. You have a sure word. So 600 men are about to enter in and get back all their possessions. But what they say there is there's a little brook. They don't want to get wet. There's a little obstacle, huh? Isn't there always a little, a little forgiveness, a little pride? I got to set my pride down. Have you ever dealt with that? If I could just get beyond myself. You know what the biggest problem is? Is me. If I can just put myself down. And here's this brook. David and 600 men have a sure word. All they have to do is cross over the brook, brook, the shore. And the Bible says 200 men think that's more important than what's ahead of them. We would rather have this life than a life to come. And the Bible says, this is so powerful, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. Look at this. Verse 9. Verse 9. David went, 600 men, and came to the brook where those stayed who were left behind. Those stayed who were left behind. Here's the big question. Who gets left behind in God? The only the ones who choose to stay behind. It's your choice. You choose. The only ones who get stuck is the ones who say, I'm going to choose to stay in this offense. I'm going to choose to stay in this fear. I've had the privilege to pastor and lead for many, many years, one of the honors of my life. And I could, the list is too far of how many men and women, potential, prophecy, destiny I've seen have all the promise, but then they come up to an obstacle. And I just tell them, stay in it. Don't give up. But my heart's been broken people after people because I realized I can't want it for them. A test comes to everybody. Remember what Jesus said to Simon Peter? Simon, Simon, the enemy's asked to sift you like wheat, but I'm praying your faith won't fail. Jesus won't even stop the test. But he's praying that our faith won't fail. And I've seen so many people, marriages and families and people, they come up to moments where obstacle, setback. And I just say, just make the choice. I promise it'll get better. Just overcome it. Don't get stuck there. And so many people just choose to just, I'll just stay here. I'm just going to tap out right now. I just don't. Can I just encourage you? Cross over. Cross over. There's so much more ahead of us. There's so much more God's doing. Get wet. Get wet in the brook. And only 400 came back with a great report. My pastoral heart, I wish everyone would come through the offense. I've seen them happen to worship. Get through the offense. Seen it happen on staff, seen it happen on team. Get through the offense, get through the offense, get through the hardship. You know, every time God's a, approached Adam and I with a blessing, it always came sometimes in the disguise of an obstacle. You realize that? And if we can just get through these moments of obstacles, we can enter in and cross in. There needs to be a little fight in you. There needs to be a little determination in you. How bad do you want it? There needs to be a little Teflon in you, huh? Remember when Paul got bit by the viper? What did Paul do? He shook it off in the fire. You got to learn how to shake some stuff off. There's some emails I just got to shake off. There's some people I got to just shake off some opinions. We got to learn how to shake 
but I can't shake it for you. You gotta learn how to shake the world off you. Shake off the sway. Shake off the things around you, because I'm here to tell you, church, it's time for us to cross over and enter and don't get left behind in this hour. Don't fall asleep in this hour. And you're saying, what does he know that I don't know? Nothing, I know the word, but I sense the Holy Spirit is calling us to where he came from. Come on, son. So glad you joined me. I've been waiting for y'all message. Say it with me. Who gets left behind? Those who choose to stay behind. I choose to move forward. What did David do? David pursued. Come on, what do good dads do like my dad did for all these years? You know what he did? Pursue. Pursue. Hey, we pursue heaven on earth. We pursue his kingdom come. What did my mom do? She pursued the kingdom. Just keep pursuing, mom. Just keep pursuing, dad. Just keep pursuing. You know what a good leader does? A good leader just keeps pursuing what's forward. I don't have all the answers. I don't know, but I'm going to keep moving with Jesus because the Holy Spirit's leading me onward. Leaders pursue. Marriages pursue. Families, come on, take your family. Say, we are a family that's going to pursue the king and his kingdom. Whatever it looks like, whatever uncharted territory there is, I'm going to pursue it with joy and faith. I'm not going to get stuck here. Don't get stuck in the divorce. I pity your divorce. I'm sorry about the divorce. I know your heart's broken, but don't let the divorce stop you. I'm sorry about the offense and the unforgiveness. I know it was wrong. I know it was hurtful. I know. But let me tell you, joy comes in the morning. Don't get paralyzed in the offense and the betrayal. Don't get stuck there. Let's go on. I'm sorry about the hurt and the disappointment. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be betrayed. I know what it's like. But don't get stuck in your hurt and disappointment. Move on. Jesus went forward so I can move forward. Jesus, the Passover lamb, crossed over so we can enter in. Don't let the pain paralyze you. and Don't let the fear exclude you. Praise God. To cross over, we all must press in and press out and press on. Say that with me. To cross over, I got to press in spiritually. I got to press into Jesus spiritually. I got to press in. And then I, I got to press out. I can't get internally small. I got to press out and I got to stay open. I got to keep your heart open. I can't, get, I can't get all comfortable. I can't get closed in. And a lot of people, when they get hurt, they just close in. Right. No, no, I got to press in. I got to press out. I got to press on. I got to press into Jesus. I got to press on. Get bigger, Matthew. Grow, Matthew. Stay strong, Matthew. Stay generous, Matthew. Don't get stingy, Matthew. Don't get, stay big. Celebrate, celebrate. You know, the real test of celebration is if you can't celebrate somebody, you know you have an issue inside. Right. We should weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Hey, if someone's celebrating, I'm celebrating. You got a new house? Oh my gosh, amazing. Someone lost their house? I'm weeping. We are believers who are big inside. I don't got to tear you down to make myself feel better. We're here to celebrate and pray and cover and protect each other. Gossip keeps you small. And I got to press on. Oh, I got to press on. There's more revelation. Come on, this book's to be written. Come on, should Jesus tear this? Come on, we got to press on. Press in, press out, press on. Don't get stuck. I can't say it enough. And just, just hear this as I conclude. This morning, this afternoon, or tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We know him. And Jesus went forward so I can move forward. And every obstacle. Don't, don't get stuck. Don't fall asleep. Don't fall away. Don't give away to deception. Not now. We've come too far. He's taught us too much. Don't get left behind. And just hear the preaching of the kingdom. Jesus said the message of the kingdom in Matthew 24, the message of the kingdom. Let me just preach this to you real quick. Jesus is the Passover lamb. Jesus is the Passover lamb. Remember, John said, behold, the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. He's the Passover lamb, and he passed through the heavens. The Bible says in Hebrews, he passed through the heavens. That's why he's the great high priest. He passed through the heavens, and he's so far above the heavens. He's so far above the demonic. He passed through the heavens for us, above the heavens. He already made the way for us. He shed his blood for all generations, once and for all. He forgave all. He healed all. He redeemed all. Jesus passed through the heavens so that now we can cross over the Passover lamb 
passed over so you and I can cross over. And two, all he has, just hear it as I conclude. What a great high priest we have who passed through the heavens. I love this, and I beat myself up because I lift this out of my Easter message. You ever do that? Oh, I should have said that. I should have preached that. Where was that when I needed it? I was so mad at myself. I almost wanted to quit, but I told myself, no, we better cross over. You've come too far, Matthew, to quit now. I'm kidding. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Get this in your spirit. You got to hear this. This is powerful. This is Jesus Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and the blood, look at this, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had power of death. That is the devil. Jesus destroyed the power of death. That is the devil. Stop giving him place. What does Ephesians say? Let him who stole steal no longer. Jesus destroyed the power death. Ephesians says he is our peace. He's made us one. He's broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh all the enmity that he might reconcile him to himself, one man by his blood. And Paul leaves us with this statement. Paul says to the mature believers, and we've got to be mature in this hour. We've got to be mature. And Paul as he writes from a prison cell. He writes these words to the church at Philippi, the community at Philippi, and it speaks to us. But look at the context that Paul says, therefore let us, as many as have a mature mind, have this mind. This is for the mature. The, the, the immature won't get this. This is for the mature. Well, let me mature us, me and all of us real quick. Let's mature. Let's sober up real quick. Here we go. And if anything, if any of you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you. Is that powerful? Paul goes, this is so truthful. If you don't know it, God will teach you himself. What's the context? It's what you all know. Verse 12. What's Paul say? One thing I do. I let go of what's behind me and I press. That's maturity. I press, I press, I press. You know how you press? Sometimes I got to get pressed to press. Sometimes I feel the press. Sometimes I got to die that he may increase. I must decrease that he may increase. I must lose myself. And I think the Holy Spirit squeezing us right now so that we can die and Christ can arise. And mature people know I got to press on. I've got to overcome this obstacle and this challenge. So I end. The beautiful thing about God is it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And he's reaching his hand down to all of us right now, isn't he? He's giving us another chance. Giving us another opportunity. Friend, the grace and the power of Jesus. You don't have to get stuck in sin. You don't have to get stuck in shame. You don't have to get stuck in the fear of death. Oh, death, where are your sting? Jesus has conquered anything we'll ever face. And if you know him, You don't need anything from him. He is who you need. And Jesus has enabled all of us as the Passover lamb to enter in to what's ahead of us. And I have great courage and confidence to say, what's ahead of us is better than what's behind us. The best is yet to come and heaven is my home. I wasn't made for this life, it's a vapor. And soon and very soon will the Son of God come upon the clouds and the trumpet will sound. Oh, sound the trumpet in Zion. And the dead in Christ will rise and we will meet him in the air. Oh, glory to God. The best is yet to come. Move forward. Enter into all that is to come. I see freedom. I see victory. I see breakthrough. I see recovery. In fact, I feel the next 24 hours, there's a restoration of families. There's a restoration of relationships. He's reconciling homes. He's healing the brokenhearted. He's doing a work, America. He's doing a work. He's sweeping the White House, the church house, the schoolhouse. Jesus is at work. And he is calling his church to cross over. Let's go. Let's go. 
Let's move. Let's go. We're entering in. It's new ground, no fear. New ground, no fear. In this new ground, no fear. New ground, no fear. New ground, no shame. It's unblemished. It's healed. It's time to cross over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know where you're at because I'm tone deaf. But that Holy Spirit thing or Holy Spirit fire, just for a moment, right where you are, just open your heart. He's here. There's such an anointing. Holy Spirit touch. Holy Spirit awaken. Holy Spirit revive. Holy Spirit burn like a fire. Consume Thank you, Isaac. I should love you too. Consume me. Isaac, you're an overcomer, man. You, you inspire me, Isaac. Lord, I surrender. I'm overcoming. To your glory. I'm overcoming. For your glory. Living water. River wild in me. Immerse me. saved in Jesus name families are coming phone calls are coming emails are coming I see family I declare it uh, Elijah the hearts of fathers and sons are being restored I feel it in Jesus name be healed home be healed family be restored fathers and sons mothers and daughters in-laws and outlaws be restored glory glory son if I could just leave him in a prayer as you're there just that's it. I surrender. This is the prayer. Say, Jesus, all power belongs to you. There's many ways to Jesus, but there's only one way to God. That's Jesus. He is the way. Many ways to Jesus, but there's only one way to the Father. That's Jesus. Say, Jesus, I decrease that you may increase. I feel it. You're holding on to it, sir. You're holding on to it, ma'am. Let it go. Release it. Surrender it now. Surrender it. Surrender it. And cast your care. Jesus, heal me. I repent of wrongdoing. And I turn to you. In Jesus' name. I know we're a little long on this broadcast, but there's something powerful at work. One more time. Talon and Alec lead us. Holy Spirit, come like a fire. Holy Spirit.
resurrection of life. He specializes in raising the dead. Surrender it all to him today. Place the marriage on the altar and let Jesus do what only Jesus can do and raise the dead. It's been an honor to serve you and to worship with you. We're here for you. The best is yet to come. God bless you. We're here. If you need prayer, as was said and throughout all of our broadcasts today, we're here for you. We're praying for you. If you belong to this church, we love you. Thank you for who you are. We're better and stronger together. Have the best Sunday, the best week, because it's time for all of us to cross over and to enter in to our heavenly home. God bless. Hallelujah, what an amazing service. God just moved so powerfully and so intimately. I hope that you felt that throughout your screen. Um, but thank you for joining us today. We just want to underscore and remind you that if you gave your life to Christ, that is the biggest, biggest opportunity that you just got. And we want to celebrate with you. We want to pray with you. So we ask that if you just ask God into your life, that you click that link. Also, if you want prayer, if you need prayer, we're here. We have a prayer team ready to pray over you. Our staff is ready to pray over you. We want to do this life with you. So there's links in that live chat that you could click on. Let's pursue today, church, with joy and with faith. We are moving forward to the end. We love you and we'll see you next week.